subscribe and if you're not welcome back um i'm done singing i'm done singing hopefully i don't start singing the drunker i get in this video and by the way this is a drunk get ready with me um hopefully i don't get too tense but honestly it's okay if i do you know like i i planned accordingly so just know we're good yeah let's get into this video i'm excited um i'm gonna insert the clip of me making all of the Christmas drinks, so let's get into that clip. All right, guys, before we start, you know I have to get in to the cocktails. That's the point of this video, that's, that's the point. Yeah, we're getting ready, yeah, we're doing hair and makeup, but it's really all about these holiday cocktails. So let's get into it. The first drink that I'm going to try to make is gonna be the Jack Frost drink, and it's blue with like a with the white rim. So let's get into that. I'm really just gonna wing it. I didn't look for a recipe that had like how much to serve. So I'm just gonna do it based off of how I'm feeling today. See this? Professional first. I don't know which one goes first, but I'm just gonna... Oh, I did that so wrong. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's so fine. That's fine, I did it wrong, but... This is so cute. Now we're gonna go in with the actual drink itself. Um, yeah, so we're gonna put, I'm gonna start with the rum first off of this, I don't know. We're gonna do two shots of light rum. Hopefully it could fit inside the freaking, okay, half. I'm gonna do one and a half shots of rum because I don't think it's gonna fit in this cup. A full shot of pineapple because I like pineapple and if you don't, then don't do it. I'm gonna do, Okay, this, we really want it blue, so I'm gonna do a full one of that. Okay. And then let's go in with, I don't know how much of this cream the cocoa. Ooh, why is it like that? The cream of coconut in here. Mm. Ooh, ooh. We're usually not this messy, but we got drinks to make. So I don't know how bartenders do it so fast. I'm gonna put a little bit of this because uh, cream of coconut. Oh, cream of coconut. These are both cream of coconut, and I'm telling you the consistency are different. So we're just gonna put some more. You see, that makes way more sense. Okay. Up and down. Shit, 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 shit. And what, Tina? Oh, you need something to change here. This is supposed to be blue, so if it doesn't come out blue, we did something fucking wrong. Should I try it first before I pour it in there? Ooh. Ooh. <gasps> you could probably do the rim way better than I did, obviously. If you use like corn syrup, I just use cream of coconut for the rim. But it is good, look at that blue. The blue is bluing, like. So for this one, all the drink needs is ice cubes, Malibu rum, and three tablespoons of coconut cream. So let's get the six ice cubes. Okay, two, three, four, five, six. This, that is six ice cubes. We're gonna do three tablespoons of coconut, cream of coconut, one, Two, three, whatever. That looks pretty good. And then 1.5 ounces of Malibu rum. We're gonna go back in, back in with this shot thing. Just gonna fill it up. I don't know how much 1.5 ounces is. So basically, this is just all. It's supposed to be a blended drink. Okay. You know what we're gonna do with this one? This one's a flop. I'm not bringing out my blender, but this is a flop. So this is called the Sex on the Snowbank, and I'm pretty sure I know why because it's all rum. So 
I don't know, you can put that one together. Um, this is option number two. It is supposed to be blended. I'm just not bringing out a blender right now. We have one more, one more, one more. Mm -mm. This, this better not be like one that I have to pop. Why isn't it green? Oh, we need pineapple. <laughs> but that is a pretty blue. But no, the point is to make him up a book and he's a mean one. Mr. Grinch. Does it look blue? Does that look blue? No. Let me fuck this one up. Okay. That's as green as it's gonna get. That's green. Okay, so we got the Grinch one. And this is just champagne and pineapple and blue liquor. Oh, that's like water. Ooh. This one, sex on the board, sex on the snow walk. Wait, this is, that's what it's called? No, this is sex on the snow bank. Okay, this one is just rum and cream of coconut. It tastes like like a day on the beach when you're just sipping like a bottle of Malibu. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. For some reason, I have memories of me just on the beach drinking Malibu, but that is not it. And then we got the the Jack Frost one. I thought that was going to be my favorite, but this one's my favorite. The, drink, the Grinch one. I'm going to save this one for last, and I'm going to finish what I made here. So let's get into this video. So you're gonna see me sip in this guy and this pretty fella over here, and we're gonna get into this. Welcome back, and we went with the Jack Frost drink. I did make it a little sweeter, and as you can tell, um, the rim is not rimming the way I would love it to rim, but it is strong. Ugh, that is strong. I don't know why I chose rum. All of the holiday recipes, they were all rum. Okay, but before I keep talking, I don't want to keep looking busted, busted, crusty, dusty. So let me at least like do my brows and mascara. You know, y'all got me looking ratchet. lashes I'm wearing right now are So Wispy by Kiss. The eyeliner uh, pen that I use is from Urban Decay 24-7 inks. I really like the application on this. For beginners, I feel like having this right here, like to keep your eye, like to keep your hands from shaky, I feel like this is essential. And for my brows, I just went in with this Sephora pencil, which is way too light for me. And She Glam's um, like brow freeze. Um, and right now for the primer, um, I'm going in with this Fenty, Fenty Beauty Soft Matte Primer. I okay, brows, lashes, liner done. I don't know if I'm going to do eyeshadow yet. But to me, accomplishing this, which I have came a long way because who knew that I would figure out eyeliner and lashes? Who knew? To that, I'm going to just drink. We're just going to drink. And then I'm going to get in to the first topic of the video. First topic of the video 2024 goals and I'm just gonna start this off before I get too drunk and just start blabbing about like what y'all really want to hear like the the ooh, how do I get over a cheater how do you forgive a cheater before I get into those conversations let's start off on some positive vibes I feel like I had a lot of goals that I set for myself this year that I accomplished 2023 thank you it was graduating it was starting a channel it was just really trying to find what my passions were and what I really wanted to do because I feel like when you're in school it's just school like you're like focused on school and now that I was done I'm like oh my gosh what do I really like you know like 2024 is going to be all about brands and businesses for me up with me I have both of my future businesses in my bio already one is simply elevating one is simply sellies and just stay tuned to find out what those are, what they're going to consist of. And I'm super excited. It's going to ice boss, babe, 2024. And that it's for me, the energy I'm, I'm holding for me, but I'm also holding for all of the future boss babes that y'all want to go do something, go do your big one, go get it done. 
do it. And to tie that in with one of my products, I'm dropping manifestation journals. I am a true firm believer in manifestation. What you let out comes back. And every single day for the past year, since I was like in the third grade, I've always had a journal. I've always written in it. I've always either wrote, you know, my goals, what I had going on in life, if I was happy, if I was sad. I always went to like a pen and paper to vent. And I'm just so happy that I can finally create my own manifestation journal. This is just the beginning, by the way. Eventually, I want to drop all different types of journals. Like, I have one already, like ADHD. I want to drop... Honestly, I'm going to save... I'm going to save the teasers for later for another video. Just know a lot of big things coming. And I can't wait to share everything with y'all. And I'm so heavy on, like... I love being a cocky, confident son of a gun. And I want everybody to have the energy within themselves. And I hope my products help you boost your own ego. And many more other things, obviously. But that's one of the main ones. I feel like a lot of people like are like, how are you so confident? That I'm like, girl, you need to be like that too. Like, get it, get it. Let's get it together. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's where a lot of women lack or anybody lacks. It's like, yeah, it's, it's great to be confident. But to share that confidence... Is empowering to not only yourself but to everyone around you. So to that answer, I'm gonna take a sip because 2024, I'm coming for you, bitch. I'm coming for you, coming from that. I'm coming for your pockets, bitch. Oh my god, why am I talking like that? All right now, we're only on foundation, guys. We're like three hours into this makeup look and we're only on foundation. Um, I did mix these two foundations. Let's get into the next. The next topic, ladies. I love this question, and I'm gonna start off strong. Next question, um, sister-in-law relationships. And hopefully this person didn't ask me this trying to be messy or whatever. I don't consider it trying to be messy, but you never know anyone's intentions behind a question. But what I could say genuinely about all my sister-in-laws, I think they all are so different and they all have such separate things going on for themselves. And I have such beautiful relationships with all separate of them and I just think they're all so different and all so sweet and all so kind and they all have their traits that I adore and that is how I feel about all my sister-in-laws right now or future sister-in-laws but I am excited I do have a little brother and he's in high school he's about to graduate high school soon and that's gonna be like my last like sister-in-law like we have one more um like I'm waiting like I'm waiting for him to bring home a girlfriend and like introduce us but you know, he hasn't yet. So I'm interested to see because it's different. Like my older brother's girlfriend is different. But then my little brother having a girlfriend. I don't know. I'm interested to see because he is he is more timid and more to himself. So I'm, I'm just curious on to if his girlfriend's. I'm curious to see if his girlfriend's going to be like outgoing or if she's going to be shy too. Like I'm super excited for that. But as of right now, the sister, the future sister-in-laws that I do have, I do have amazing, great relationships with. I'm so proud of each and every one of them. They're all doing their big ones. They're all accomplishing all the things that they want to accomplish in life. And I feel like that is like, that's all anyone can ask for. You know what I mean? And to my future, future sister-in-law that I don't know, that I haven't met yet, but you're going to date my little brother. I'm excited. I'm most excited to meet you because my little brother is very special. He's a smart guy, so... I'm gonna have my eye out for you, little girl. No, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be watching you. I'm gonna be watching you. The ad question. We gonna take a sippy. I think I'm gonna finish this drink, and then we're gonna have to go pour myself up for the next topic. Hold up. Someone said fake girlfriends. Let me, let me go do a refill. Hold up. We gonna drink this. We have a new guest with us. Kobe has joined. And if you've watched previous videos, you know how that goes when he joins. He'd just be making extra freaking noise in the back because he's extra. He thinks he's looking at this drink like he wants them. Okay. Already shook it. Ooh. No, 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 no. Fake girlfriends to me was an issue in high school, but now I feel like I have a really good radar for like weird energy. <clears throat> it's a little bit too good for my liking because I just be knowing. Like, I just know. Like, I'm always right when it comes to somebody. I've never been wrong. Knock on wood. But I've never ever been wrong about nobody. It's either, oh my God, they're a genuine person and I love being around them, or it's like, yep, red flag, you red flag. And the thing is with me, oh guys, I'm a little tipsy. Whoo, whoo. The thing is with me is that um, 
when I see red flags, I'm not staying. I feel like a lot of people's problems is like, oh, they know a red flag, but oh, like, but like they're sweet or like, oh, they, they did this for me like three years ago. No, I'm so sorry. Once you see a red flag, bitch, run. Run, why are you still around? Why are you still there? It's not gonna get better. Like, I'm so sorry. And and you're only gonna start, like for me, my my positive, like I, I, could, I feel like a good trait of mine is like once I already see a red flag, all I see after that is like, every time you do something, that's a red flag I see that and I tally them up I'm like okay this is too much so it's like if y'all have seen me with somebody for a good period of time then you don't see me with them no more just know that they were the problem and I would love I would love for someone to and I'm 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 like putting like I'm betting like a million dollars on this I would love for someone to come out of the forest or come out of somewhere or some crevices and try to say that I was the problem I was the drama try to say some shit of some shit like I would love it Please come to the surface. You can't. I give everybody clean slate, clean slate. And obviously you do have to keep in mind that not all personalities are going to like be cohesive. They might clash, but I am such like a vibey vibe person. I kind of know how to adapt and evolve to a person. Like if I know I'm being too much and this person's like a, like a chill vibe, shit, we could be chill. Like we could be chill together, you know, like we could do that. So I would like to say that fake friends stay the fuck away and if you know they're fake better kick them to the curb and don't keep that energy around it's not gonna get better and don't ever be the fake friend like that is the worst fucking thing to be don't ever be the fake friend one that's a reputation that you do not want to have connected to your name two that just is ugly like it, it gives ugly it gives ugly don't ever be the girl that's talking behind somebody's back calling somebody names calling some don't do that y'all don't do that don't fucking do that e -e. Sa -a -a -a. Contour or oh, contour. <sighs> Staying content in a long-term relationship. What is that supposed to mean? What is that supposed to mean? Y'all, all I know is healthy long-term relationships. Like I grew up with my parents being in a healthy long-term relationship. So that is all I know. And that is what in my head works and in my head what I think needs to happen. So if you ever, ever, ever see me marry someone, just know I'm locked in. I'm for lifers. How to stay content? Man, don't pick somebody. If you even have to ask yourself, how do I stay content? No, it should always be fun. It should always be a good time. You should always be joking around with your partner. You should always be spontaneous. You should always be living life on the edge with your partner. Like that should be your guy, your best friend, your home, you know? Are you serious, Kobe? So that's what I got to say to that. You guys know for my first drunk get ready with me, I shaved my eyebrow off but it's really something about the ends of my eyebrows like they just grow funny that was aggressive hold on let me see what i could do hold up like why does that look like that right there oh okay next question who do we dislike i don't dislike anyone and if i did i just wouldn't like I feel like having hatred or disliking someone in your heart is not healthy. Does that make sense? Like how could I sit here and be like, I hate this person, I dislike this person and still have, still try to have a positive day. And if you're not like me and if you're not built like me, it's not gonna make sense to you. There has been situations where, yeah, I've cut fake people off. Yeah, I've cut a few people off. And I could have easily been like, I hate that person. I despise that person. I dislike that person. But I don't I just don't like I could even still like the bitches that have done me the wrongest I could still be in a room with and be cordial with because that's how much peace I bring myself you know what I mean I'm like yeah they're lost it's always their loss that's what I that's what I tell myself that's a fact behind every single situation I've ever been in their loss so for me to dislike or hate someone it just wouldn't it doesn't make sense to me it doesn't so do we dislike anybody no can that change in the future maybe don't get on my bad side baby don't do it. No. I'm creepy right now. Uh uh. This rum is rum and tequila, two different types of drunk. I'm getting like rawr. Ooh, I keep drinking it. We want more vlogs. And I could give you more vlogs. We could do that. We you know, I'm a vlog girly. Like I love the authentic, natural shit. Get me in my fucking element. Get me doing what I do. Let's do it. Anything but vlogs is what I don't like to do. So if y'all saying you want more vlogs, let's run them vlogs up. 
run them blouse up. Look at my titties. Run them blouse up. I got like grandma titties in this outfit. I don't want to push it up for y'all. For y'all, aka the girls. The girls. Oh, I heard my echo. Oh. Mm. Let's go in with some concealer. The first concealer y'all saw me go in with was this It Cosmetics one. Now I'm going to go in with these Haas Lab ones. I have two. One is shade Light Rosy and the other is Light Golden. I just like, I love a pink undertone moment, but I also love like a, like a yellow undertone moment for some reason. And I feel like mixing these is just my shade. It's all about you know, finding what works for you. And me personally, I have to mix shit for me to figure out my, my, um, my shades, which there's no problem with that. I'm not, I'm not coming for Lady Gaga. Who would come for Lady Gaga? Pa, 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 go face, pa, 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 go face. Ma, 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 ma. I'm going through it. I'm getting warm. Next question. Ooh, not me singing. Do you get short do you get short of breath when you have anxiety? How do you deal with it in public? Um, my anxiety, um, and I feel like I don't, I talk about it, I don't talk about it, I talk about it, I don't talk about it. I have like severe social anxiety, I have severe regular anxiety, I have severe, like if I get, if I get too, if I'm overworking my body, I will get anxiety just because I'm like, fuck, I'm overwhelmed. Um, my anxiety comes in different shapes and forms. It comes in different waves. It comes whenever it wants to come. I think a, a recent, not recent, but a new thing that I've been doing is just giving myself a break, taking a step back, breathing. Have I gotten anxiety in public? Yes, and it's the worst fucking feeling. It is like I feel out of body. I feel like there's bugs crawling on me. I want to go home. I get, I get like anxious. I get annoying. Like, don't talk to me. And of course, I don't like being a little bratty, but anxiety to me, is just something that it like sticks, it sticks. And if you don't acknowledge it, and if you don't try to move forward with it, it's just going to stick. And if you don't talk about it with people, it's really going to stick. You know what I mean? Like a, a recent thing that I started doing is communicating with my partner. Hey, I have anxiety right now, by the way. Um, I think like two nights ago I had anxiety and we were like lay laying down and falling asleep for me has always been a really hard problem and I had a really good conversation with someone recently and the conversation ended up being um, that I do want to get more in tune with God and buying a Bible and that whole spectrum but I'm not even going to talk about it because I'm so I'm so uneducated and that's just a whole different conversation but so that's something to look forward to for me like I'm just trying to be the most healthy person ever and she was having the same sleeping problems as me she had asked me hey like she had asked me a bunch of questions and she said she was she had went through the same thing when she was my age and she told me how she resolved it so one way a way that I'm gonna try resolving my sleeping problems and like my my problems is probably looking to God for those things um, but two nights ago basically more of the story I mean to change to back to get back to the story two nights or like I think last night I had laid down and Justice could fall my boyfriend could fall asleep like this he could fall asleep like like nothing me on the other end I can't and um yesterday I was doing a bunch of stuff during the day for like my brand and it's really it's coming really soon like it's coming within the next week and a half and so I was like overworking myself throughout the whole day from the moment I woke up till I went to till I went to sleep I was all brand mode like brand 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 what do I have to do what do I have to get done and so when it was finally time for me to rest my eyes at night and go to sleep I was like I'm overwhelmed I have anxiety I'm anxious I'm like being, I'm doubting myself. And it was all those things when I laid my head down at night and something that I'm really, that I, I feel like everyone, I mean, and one thing that I've started changing is communicating those feelings when I'm feeling those things because if I don't say them out loud or write them down on a journal or anything, it's self-sabotage, honestly. Like I will be stuck with those emotions for a week if I don't get them out, if I don't, you know, if I don't vent in any type of way. There's so many different ways of venting. But that's how I feel about mental health, anxiety, everything. Um, that's my, that's my, um, that's where I'm at right now, how I feel about it. Do I get anxiety in public? Yes. Do I like it? No. Do I have a method to the madness? 100%. And yeah, it's all about really acknowledging 
the situation and trying to move forward. If you just stay stuck in it, it's not going to do you no good. How was it adapting with living with your partner versus living by yourself? Okay. When I met Justice, um, I think, so during COVID, I was in school. I had my own apartment where I was going to college at. And I literally left my parents and everything during COVID. That's when everything changed. Um, it was a very short period of time where I came back home, stayed with my parents. And that's kind of the era where justice came around. So I did go from living by myself, living with my parents and living with justice. So I think once I got back home and I met justice, I was like ready for, I was ready for that commitment i was just like let's fucking do it let's do it i didn't like living alone i hated living alone it was a beautiful thing i feel like a lot of people do enjoy it but for me it's like i'm a yapper y'all like i need to be with someone 24 7. i just love being around people's energy i am talkative i'm friendly that's like where i shine the most you know so I think living by myself, I didn't really like it. Living with my parents, I loved. I will literally, I could live with my parents for the rest of my life. I loved it. Um, they were really never at home because my parents worked like 24 seven. They're technically home alone all the fucking time. And then I met Justice and then I moved in with him like within the four months of, the first four months of us dating. It just felt right to me. It felt perfectly. So to answer the question, how did I adapt? How did, how was the transition for me? It was seamless. Like to me, I mean, the way he asked me wasn't seamless. Like, he just assumed that I would just live with him. And I was like, honey, you need to ask me, like, like it's a huge deal for me. Like, uh, you know, like, you need to voice that you want me living with you. And that wasn't it at the time. It was a whole misunderstanding at the time. But that was that. And I think the transition was seamless. It was beautiful. And would I do it again? 100%. Um, yeah, that's how I feel about it. You know when you're drunk and you just start like, oh, I look good. The contour is slaying. Concealer is big. Yeah, you see that bright under eye. Okay, how's lab? Okay, what is this? What is this? I'm gonna drink this. No, I know what it is. I'm just gonna finish it. That's what it is. Um... Woo! Shake a shake. Shake a shake. Shake a shake. Shake a shake. Okay, I don't, don't want to make a mess. Guys, I feel like I got like, like two more drinks in me. Let ah! answer the next question. How was it? What was it like growing up in Miami? I'm out here in Miami. Not looking for the hoochie daddies because my man is a hoochie daddy. And he be buying me the baggies. Yeah. 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 Just fucking kidding. Just fucking kidding. What was it like growing up in Miami? Miami. I loved that. It was so diverse out here. It was there was always something new to do. Um, the people out here. Um, I've met some great people and I've met some shitty people. I just I came from Chicago, so and I came from like a suburb area in Chicago. Coming from there to here, and it wasn't as diverse. I think there was primarily like Jewish people in the area that I lived in, and then coming out here to Miami, it was like everybody of everybody. I it was like a whole different life out here. And since I've came out here, it just fits me well. It makes sense. I know my parents. Since my mom is retiring soon, and my dad's already retired, I know my parents. I I'm pretty sure my parents are gonna end up somewhere else. And will that leave me in Miami long term? I don't know. But I do love Miami, and I. Oh, that's my voice. I do love Miami and I can see myself out here forever. Forever and ever and ever and ever. <gasps> oh my gosh, guys. I'm so sorry to be like that girl, but I'm about to hit 40k subscribers. And you know what that means? Giveaway fucking time. Big giveaway. I'm feeling tipsy and lit right now. So let's do $200. Should we do $200? Should I do $200? I could either do one person wins $200 or two people win $100. I'm going to do $200. Y'all comment on this video. Anybody that comments anything on this video, you are in the run to win $200. And yeah, if you can, please comment your Instagram name when you comment. So I could just DM you when you win. And if you don't, I'll just comment under it. Whatever. We will figure that out. There's, you know... It, it works like that and actually the girl that won the heels um 
in like a few videos ago, I still have the heels. So I need to go back to the other video and like comment, comment again under the comment. Be like, girl, like I have your heels. You're trying to win your heels or what? Whole different conversation. I better go to the motherfucking club after this. I know I'm not. It's literally a Tuesday at fucking, it's two o'clock on a Tuesday. It's two o'clock on a Tuesday right now. I'm not going nowhere. I'm gonna, after this, I literally have like a jug of water next to me and, and I'm gonna try to act the best that I can to not piss my man off. How would you deal with a shady sister-in-law that, that's throwing low blows as a joke? I don't like passive aggressive. I don't. Um, I just don't. And that is screaming passive aggressive. And I feel like with people that are passive aggressive, like they're going to do the shady shit. But when you bring it to the surface, they're going to play victim automatically. They're going to be like, oh my God, what are you talking about? Like, girl, you're being passive aggressive and I'm, I'm addressing it. That's what you wanted, right? Because you're throwing these low blows. But now that I'm addressing it, I'm the problem. No. So people that are passive aggressive, let them be passive aggressive. Don't let the low blows bother you. And... Don't let it bother you. Do not let it bother you. I think the best thing you can do is find your peace in it. Like, just know, like, detach. And if you, like, are, if your feelings are hurt that she's throwing the low blows, I just think that if she really cared for you, I just think those low blows wouldn't even be a conversation. So maybe communicate, hey, I don't appreciate those low blows. And if she, I'm 99% I'm sure that someone's being passive aggressive and throwing low blows they're gonna play victim when it's addressed so I, I could i would just communicate and if it's not understood and respected that you communicated about that find the peace within you to not give a fuck you know what i mean like be like okay they're lost i'm a great person i, I bring great things to the table and if they want to have that energy towards me you can have that and other people are going to appreciate my energy and just live life like that like that's all i can say today and to that we gonna drink because fuck passive aggressive and I can be really good at it, but I choose not to be, you know? Like, it's so easy to be passive-aggressive. Like, who doesn't want to be passive-aggressive? Hardest thing that I ever had to go through? Mm, I would just have to say, now, hardest thing that I've ever had to go through, there's been multiple things. I think forgiveness of people that I truly love, I do not forgive nor do I forget. I'm very, like, I will cut you off and I will never speak to you again and I'm very heavy on it. But there's been situations and scenarios where I have, I've had to forgive people that I've loved and I feel like that is so hard for me because it's like I would have never done that to you. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. But I would have never done some of the shit that has been done to me and if I choose to forgive you, just know that that is really hard for me. It's super hard for me because I, I'm a type that's like, yeah, I forgive you but I know I shouldn't have and I'm gonna be thinking about it all the time and I don't wanna, like if I'm telling you I forgive you, I don't wanna make you feel like shit every day. So on top of me having to forgive the shit you did, now I'm trying to, now I'm I'm supposed to treat you good after you did me like that. Like it's a whole process. So one of the hardest things I could say that I've ever done is forgiven people when they didn't deserve it and allowed them to stay in my life. That is probably one. And if you can, and if you can achieve that, props to you i know personally that it's like super hard and it's not fun it's not a good feeling but you do what you do for the people you love honey it's been multiple occasions i'm not just speaking about one person in general i'm speaking about multiple like y'all yeah, people be trying it but it is what it is when are you planning on having kids y'all okay the other day i was literally i'm just gonna answer the question without like a long answer behind it if it were up to me i would have had kids yesterday i love babies i think they're so cute i want a baby so bad i love my dogs i treat my dogs like children and I, even when i have kids i'm gonna continue to treat my dogs like children um if it were up to me i would have had babies like five years ago i would have still been in high school five years ago not the point i would have done it like i just i love babies and i feel like if like i'm at the i don't know what it was the second i turned 22 my perspective on so many things switched and I don't know babies just sound so cute right now like you can't tell me you can't tell me it wouldn't fucking eat you can't tell me a baby wouldn't be so fucking cute and I was just like shopping in the baby section for one of my 
one of my friends from high school, she's having a baby boy, and I was shopping in the, sh in the Target, and I'm looking at all the baby stuff, and I was like, oh, like I can't wait till it's me. I can wait, but I really can't wait. Like I'm super excited for that journey and that chapter in my life. I can wait though, but just know like it would, if it was just me, we could have already done it. But I'm rank first. I'm mean, rank first. Then a baby. But if it happens like before, let it be. Let it be. It could be anything it wants to be. Okay. Sadly, we are coming to an end to this video, and I'm not the happiest about it. Um, I don't know if the, I don't remember if this is my second or third. Don't fucking know. Someone asked me what was my first fight with my man. I'm pretty sure one of my first arguments with him, hold up. My first arguments with him had, would have to be, oh, I overdid it with this nose contour, no. It was most definitely like a misunderstanding. Like, I feel like in the beginning, Justice really didn't understand. Like, he thought my friendliness was mistaken as flirty in the beginning. And, and it's something that I understand now. In the beginning, I was like, I was so used to, like being able to do whatever I wanted when he came around, he was like, hey, I don't like that, I don't like that, I don't like that. And there was things that he didn't like that I didn't understand. And we weren't even dating yet. And he was like, hey, you need to cut that out. And I took that like, you telling me what to do? My dad doesn't even tell me what to do. Why are you telling me what to do? And at first it was like a hard, it was really hard for me to grasp like, it was either I was in the point in the beginning before I even started dating my man It was like, okay, do we respect what he's saying and do we like listen to him? And do we just change our ways for this man or do I continue? Doing me and I and I knew me and I knew I had nothing but the purest intentions behind So even like even with him trying to say oh, you're doing too much. I was like it, it wasn't that to me so and I so it was really like that was an argument to me because I was like, why are you trying to say I'm this, that, and that? Like, why are you trying to say I'm flirty, I'm doing too much, and I'm being extra when it's really just... And now he knows that it's my personality. Like, now he understands me. Now we're two years in. He gets me. Like, now, like, if we're out and I say something, like, I'm very... I have, like, a, a very sarcastic sense of humor, which could be mistaken as flirting, if that makes sense. And in the beginning, he didn't know that. And so... I think that was like an argument in the beginning. It was like, hey, I don't like that. And I was like, hey, well, this is me. And you could either like it or not. And it was just about coming to a, like a, a middle ground. Yeah, there's a time and place where I can have my sarcasm. And yeah, now I understand, okay, sometimes with certain people, certain times, my sarcasm and my sense of humor can be t mistaken as flirting and that's just something that I have to respect. So in the beginning of, before we even started dating, that was a conversation that I, I consider an art, like that, that was our first argument that I could remember that was actually of value and that has like, that made path, that made room, that, that conversation just turned into a whole relationship because of the way we figured it out. But... Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, you guys know, like, I'm pretty, I'm just a funny girl. Like, there should be nothing wrong with being funny. And I feel like in the beginning, if you don't know that I'm fucking funny, you think I'm flirting with you. Not the girls. Y'all girls know, like, I'm just being funny. But the dudes be like, oh, she's being funny with me. No, motherfucker, I don't want you. I don't want you. Let's put some blush. Um, I'm going in with the She Glam Love Dive. Your peachy shade, your peachy. Mm, this one eats. It's giving. Oh my, my! Can't you really see it? It's way pinker than what this camera is making it seem, which I don't appreciate. Okay, for some reason I'm giving real contoured out. You guys see that blush? Ooh! Okay, we're gonna put some right here. We're gonna go up all the way over here. Oh, this is giving. This is motherfucking giving. Motherfucking giving, bitch. This drink. What do I love most about Justice? By the way, I love you. Your videos are truly the best. I love you. I love you more, bitch. Um, what I love about Justice. Um, one thing about Justice, he will always think outside the box like if I think we're having like a chill night no bitch I thought wrong 
we're going out and doing some lit shit, some spontaneous shit. Like, that's one thing I love about him because I'm like that. I love just getting up and going. Sometimes. Let me have time to do my hair and makeup. But other than that, I'm like it. I'm like, let's go, let's go, let's go. And he's like that. So that is one of my, like, biggest things. It's like, him and I, we just get each other. He's washing Rolla right now, so he's not even here. The other day, I was getting a facial. And I really, really want, I wanted to get my lips done again. I didn't. I didn't. I just outlined them. So if they look big right now, then I'm just, I'm just like that. But I didn't. Let's see how much I have left. Oh! And after, it's like in a med spa. It's in Ho Hochstein Med Spa. If you know, you know. If you're from Miami, you know. Boob God. Um, one of the many boob gods. Um, I never got my boobs done with him. So I don't even know why I'm saying that. I just know he's known as a boob god. Anyways. Um, I was getting a facial with him and afterwards, I oh know I wasn't getting a facial with him. I was getting a facial inside of his med spa and afterwards I went to the front desk and I was like, hey, is there anyone here to give me lip filler? There wasn't, but if there was, I would have my lips done right now. Like they wanted me to wait like two hours because I, I didn't make an appointment. Like I was just going like as a walk-in or whatever because I was there already and I just didn't. But like I'm like itching to get my lips done again because... Let me put y'all on. I got Botox the other day with him. Mind you, I can't even do this. Botox. I will do Botox until there's nothing. I don't see anything wrong with Botox. I really don't. I love Botox. But okay, one of the most painful procedures that I've ever done was my lips because I didn't like the feeling of like the needle going in and I just felt everything about it. But when she used insulin needles for my Botox, I was like, oh, can you use those? Because I didn't even feel the insulin needles. I was like, can you use those needles on my lips? And she's like, yeah, we do it all the time. I was like, oh. So, and then when I went for my fucking, oh, two weeks later, I went for my facial. And I asked, I'm like, hey, after my facial, I was like, can we do some lip filler? They said no. But I think I'm going to soon. And y'all just hold it. It's literally just going to look like this. Like, I feel like y'all aren't going to be able to tell, but I will. But that's not the point. The point is that I'm going to have big, juicy lips. Okay. Spit or swallow, bitch. Um, what's crazy is, like, I used to live life on the edge like that and swallow. But now, I don't even go down there. Like, these days, I'm, I'm slacking, y'all. I am slacking. I'm being lame these days. I got to get it together. Hopefully my mom's now watching this. Bow. Spit or swallow, I'm gonna have to say spit, bitch, but it's really no nothing. Like, it's really not spit or swallow because I'm not even down there. Does that make sense? But, you know, just because that question, I might be I might be spontaneous later. And it's not because I don't like to, it's just because after I got my teeth done, it's just not the same. So if you're thinking about getting your teeth done, just know that doing Walk Walk 3000 is not going to be the same. Just know. I um, How do we separate content quality time with quality time i feel like justice and i have a really good dynamic with that me personally my like if, if you guys think i'm putting out a lot of content i'm really not like i think there might be like a day my there might be like a day out of the week where like an hour i'm creating content but majority of the time is quality time with us and that's just how we do things and how we are it's just i know for his stuff it's a little different because he's always filming but it's pretty much quality time. I think he just make, can make content out of quality time, if that makes sense, and just make it look really good. But it's never really like content time. Does that make sense? Hopefully I answered that right. Okay guys, this is the final look. If you have any questions about any products that I use that I didn't mention, just ask me in the comments. Don't forget that there's a giveaway. If you comment and subscribe, just know that you might win the giveaway. And I... I think we slayed. I think this is so much better than my first drunk get ready with me. Uh, three or four, I'm not sure. Am I, um, am I gonna finish drinking this? Most definitely. I think we slayed this beat. I wish like these brights weren't as light. See, so you guys can really like, you guys can really see it. Hopefully you guys can see the beat, but I feel like my makeup routine, this makeup routine is the one if you need like a, like a nice clean beat, steal this one. And if you need, again, if you guys need any details, let me know in the comments below. I love y'all. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I am a little bit tipsy. Did I black out? I'm probably gonna, you know, keep sipping and uh, I'll keep sipping and maybe we, 
Maybe you guys can see that on TikTok. I don't know. We will see how this the rest of the day goes. I love y'all. Um, I do want to start posting twice a week for the next month. So just let me know what you guys are trying to see. And videos to look forward to that I already have filmed. I have, other than my brand, there are different announcements that I'm going to make. We filmed like gifts that we bought his family and my family and I think I'm gonna merge them into one video and sh and just show you guys what we bought all of our family members uh, I'm a little hot right now so Wednesdays and Fridays stay tuned for that I love y'all and I hope to see you guys in the next video make sure to subscribe we are on the road to 40k subscribers I am so so excited just know just know the things I'm going to do at 100k subscribers. Y'all can find out. Love y'all. Bye. Brand new Chris Brown, T-Pain. You heard it here first. Happy Boy Radio. We love you.